Welcome back. This is K24 This Morning. Still going through uh, the big story, uh, really, of the day. And, of course, this is, um, you know, life after uh, uh, Corona and how we're dealing with this uh, new reality. You can keep your questions coming in. We'll be tackling them in just a bit at K24 TV um, right there. Uh, Robert O'Quiri uh, asking, should the government also close down gyms and sports centers as a precondition? Prof, this was um, a debate even I had uh, because I was like, okay, fine. What's the social distance in a gym? Um, should I go there? Should I not? What, what's the take on this? Because it's a key debate on that particular issue. Okay, I'm not talking like government, obviously. Mm -hmm. The government probably has a position. But purely, purely from a practical point of view, a gym is the one place you don't want to be at the moment. I mm -hmm. think. Uh, you don't want to be there. Right. Because in a gym, people are hammering. Mm -hmm. People are doing physicals, right. and they are breathing, and they're hammering. The place is enclosed, and the, the gyms I know, people are many. Right. There's a crowd. Right. Don't go there. Right. So if you can... They're touching, uh, they're touching the surfaces. Right. Don't go there. Right. So you avoid it at all particular costs. Right. Uh, Edison Moss uh, from Bamburi Fisheries, uh, loving the show and loving the education we're getting uh, right now. If you have any questions, Edison Moss, uh, please send it in as well. We will be tackling them, of course, uh, right here. You can get us on 2122. Alternatively, you can also SMS us uh, on 2122, rather, or tweet us at K24TV. Uh, moving on to the Stars front page, talking about Matatus being the weak link in the anti-corona war. Um, on this particular issue, they've been called in as, as serious stakeholders in how uh, the government can actually work to manage this. But the realities on the ground, as they say, are totally different because you look at the dynamics of a Matatu, and yes, you shall tell us to try and uh, you know, have that uh, social distancing, but look at any route, at any Matatu, um, uh, any matatu route they're going to use, and you can't have that. People still have to move from point A to B, uh, let me start with Prof on this one. How do they handle this? That's, uh, last night I was thinking about matatus and I decided that that's one of the most difficult things to sort out. Matatus even have bed bugs. Last time I checked, they are <laughs> fleas and cockroaches. <laughs> but uh, it is possible to sanitize matatus before they go into, into the road. Mm -hmm. okay? And it's possible for the passengers who are getting to the matatus to be... Uh, to have their hands, you know, sanitized, right. and generally some basic hygiene uh, to look out for basic hygiene. But matatus are congested by mere virtue of their small vehicles carrying quite a number of people. Right. So it's a very difficult thing to think about. Mm -hmm. But sanitization is possible. Right. Um, yeah. There's something I saw online uh, with uh, one medic talking about the fact that probably one thing you can do in a matatus is try and make sure all the windows remain open. Is that, does, does that help mitigate this? Ah, I wonder about that. I doubt. I'm not sure about that at all. Mm -hmm. uh, coronavirus is something new. It's something that we are trying to understand. And we have, we have just had maybe 100 days to understand the virus, maybe less. Right. right. So I wouldn't know for a fact whether opening the windows or closing them is a good thing. Right. I do know that somebody in that matter will cough or will sneeze. Right. And when they sneeze, the dynamics will change. Right. How right. do you prevent this from happening and affecting other people? Mm -hmm. It's tough. A plane is a much more clean you know, environment, and people are getting infected right. in planes. Mm -hmm. How do you do this? I do not know. And, and that's really the big question mark, because it's all about the logistics behind uh, this particular one. Even after the government had given the directive and said that um, they'll be having um, sani uh, sanitizing being done before the passengers got into the Matatu, yet on, in the Senate on that particular day, there was a senator reporting that in their area, it's business as usual. So how, how do we deal with this, the logistic part of it? Because we know what we need to do, can we do it, though, and with public transport? Uh, you see, uh, let's start here. Let's look at Matatu culture to begin with. This is a culture that is full of people who are rebellious, people who... <laughs> no, it's, it's the truth, I'm, I'm, and I'm not uh, without fear of contradiction. And, and whenever you are developing a strategy for people, you must always know your, your customer, you must know your consumer. So you must understand that there is already rebellion within the matatu industry as as a whole you know they're the guys who overlap most uh, break fl flaunt rules so they are most likely going to flaunt the rules now why do i mean most likely because if that guy uh, in 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 the, the conductor or the driver does this thing for about two weeks and then he's realizing he's losing 300 bob a day on sanitizer and things like that. Then it hits him, wait, no one has been infected. Then what do they do? They start adding water into their hand sanitizer so it lasts longer. You know, those, those games. Mm -hmm. So really what needs to happen, I think instead of targeting the Matatu industry, target the Kenyan. Make the Kenyan responsible for his own cleanliness in the Matatu. Make the Kenyan responsible about touching things when he gets into the matatu. Make the Kenyan responsible about 
how they act. Perhaps matatus are one of those places where we, we should actually encourage people to get in them with, with masks because if the window is not going to work, then you have a mask and you've sanitized your hands and you're not touching surfaces, you might have a, a better chance. Uh, but at the same time, this is why we need to avoid unnecessary movement. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying you need to target the people. So target, why do people use matatus most? Because they need to get to work. So stop the need for people to go to work. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, get a lot more people working from home, get a lot more people on, on leave for, for a certain period of time so that you do not have people in, in matatus. Uh, the other thing that you can do is encourage people to work this is a good time to realize that Langata is not so far away from town. You can actually walk that distance and then, you know, probably the guys in the diaspora, Rongai, those guys can think about driving into Nini. Uh, you know, but guys in South B, South C, please, you right, know, right. Uh, you know th those are the things, the conversations that we need to start having as, as a country. But what I like about this particular uh, crisis is how it's forcing us to rethink how our society has worked for a long time. Because a lot of things have been upside down for a very long time and we've not had reason to look at them. This is a very, very good time to look at those things and those weaknesses and figure out, do we want the matatu industry to continue as it is? Because trust me, even without corona, I don't want to be in a matatu. Right. It's a very uncomfortable cockroaches <laughs> view. Mm -hmm. And Let, um, let's, let's think about China. Uh, they, they started in this manner, wondering what to do. Yes. Uh, we hope that for Kenya, we don't get to a point where all roads are closed, or Italy. Mm -hmm. Italy did the same thing. Mm -hmm. All roads are closed. You can't move, you can't drive. Yes. You have to have a special pass even to get outside of your gate of your house. Yes. You see? So maybe we should start by trying to enforce this thing in Matatu, where you need to sanitize the Matatu, and then you need mm -hmm. to make sure that people are protected. But it may get to a point, depending on how the numbers look like, that a discussion be on the table, should we shut down the roads completely? Right. This is the thing. Just make it a walking nation. If you have no, you don't even walk. Yeah. Stay at home. Okay. It and, may and, come to that. And it's very easy to get there. Mm -hmm. and, and you see, that's, that's why it is so important for people to follow the measures that the government is saying now. You see, when it's three cases and the government feels all those three cases are at Mbagathi, so, you know, all it needs to do is manage movement, then, then you're fine. But if you find 20 cases out there, and then that 20 cases, if you just do quick mathematics of infecting three people for each, then the government will be forced, you know what, everyone stay at home, no movement, unless you have a special pass. But the best way to, be, to prevent that is for Kenyans to act right. right. Stop going to, you know, uh, stop this hashtag coronavirus virus for who, you know, things like that. Stop mm -hmm. that, because it's not just about you catching it. It's, we... For the first time in a long time, humanity has to think as a collective. Right. You've got to think as a collective. So it's not just I am healthy. Is am I doing the things to keep everyone else healthy? Right. Because even if I'm not sick, okay, 80% who will get the infection will probably not notice, right? Mm -hmm. But that 20% that does notice, that 20% that does go to hospital, will shut down your country. Right. You understand? So you, you may be okay, but that 20% will ensure you can't go anywhere for three, four weeks, and then we'll see how much Netflix you can watch. So it's a key, critical 20% uh, uh, in that particular yes. regard. Yes. Uh, Prof, it, there's something he's mentioned right there, mm. and you've uh, also alluded to it, the fact that 80% um, might have it and not even yeah. Um, yeah. You know, know that they have it and move on with uh, yeah. daily life. Yeah. And it's an interesting because there's a question that has come in uh, from uh, John Nyongesa uh, right here um, asking, how do I know the difference between my common cold and uh, corona? Because <laughs> good even, even during the break, Mark was talking about the fact that yesterday you're profusely sweating, you're walking around, you're feeling a bit fatigued. Mm. You ask yourself, is it time mm. for me to go to a health mm. center and get mm. checked? Mm. You cough a bit, is it time? Mm. How do you tell the difference? When does it get to the point where you need Ooh. to go in? Uh, that's, for a normal person, that would be tough. But Coronavirus tends to present in the following manner. So it tends to give you a sore throat, right? Uh, you generally won't have a running nose, mm -hmm. but you may sneeze, mm -hmm. okay? But the thing that really makes you sick is a lung infection, right? So you get a pneumonia, a pneumonia. So when you're exerting yourself, like when you're climbing the stairs, mm -hmm. you start feeling as mm -hmm. if you don't have right. enough oxygen. Mm -hmm. You start mm -hmm. having capacity challenges, right? right? And you have fever. 
Yeah, quite f the fever is can be quite a bit, mm -hmm. and then you'll have a headache. Right. Okay. When you have a common cold, your nose may run, you may not have a sore. Right. Sometimes you may have, mm -hmm. right? You may have a slight fever, not too much. So the thing is, most people will not be able to differentiate between their cold and corona, which right. is not necessarily a bad thing, mm -hmm. except that when you have even a, something you feel is not okay, you feel like you have a cold, because you don't know whether it's corona, please isolate yourself right. as it don't infect other people. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but from a medical point of view, the, of course, there is an algorithm that you follow as a doctor to check whether the person actually mm -hmm. has corona or not. And even before you test them, you already have high, a high index of suspicion that this person may have corona. He may have all those signs and symptoms I've said, plus they were exposed to somebody who mm -hmm. was a, a case right. or who had traveled to a country that you know, had coronavirus and came in and started feeling sick and so on. Mm -hmm. So there are all these things. Now, the trouble at that level is is something that one needs to think about. We don't know this virus very well, but at the moment, we even know now that it is giving you gastrointestinal symptoms. This virus is giving you nausea, vomiting, it's giving you diarrhea, okay? And we have also now learned that it is damaging the liver and damaging the lungs, not just causing you pneumonia, even after right. you become better. Some time down the line, you'll realize that your capacity is not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. So it, there's more chronic sequelae. Right. And for the liver, it will cause you damage to the liver, and there may be more chronic sequelae. These are things we are learning as we go along. Just two weeks ago, we didn't think that it had an effect on the gut. Right. Now we know. Now we know. J just a quick question. Mm. How, how long mm. should people self-isolate? I think that's very important. Ah. All right. Uh, the, from the day you're exposed, to the day that you you have signs and symptoms appears to be somewhere between 4 and 14 days appears for the majority so ballpark you'd say a week or onwards mm -hmm. a week by the time a week is over you know whether you are badly off or not right. i would say so but we do not have a specific mm -hmm. you know date we can give and say of course, when there is a lockdown, you're probably thinking that it will be a week, two weeks, mm. three weeks, like that. Right. And the situation is assessed with the time. As, a news, uh, mm. as we move on on that particular one. Uh, so keep those questions coming in. Of course, we'll be tackling them uh, right here on the show. But they're also talking about the communication on this particular issue because there's a lot that's going on, a lot of fake news, and also a lot of uh, fake advertising as well. As found out uh, by our very own Matara, um, one a clinic in Yaya, uh, purportedly saying that they have self-testing kits for the coronavirus. Take a look at this particular story. Early Monday morning and the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council stormed the Avain Cosmetic Clinic in Yaya Center Shopping Mall, Nairobi, in search of test kits that the proprietors said could allegedly test for the COVID-19. This after an advertisement went round on social media from the clinic calling for Kenyans to buy the coronavirus test kits. The advert also indicated that out of a stock of a thousand kits, only 400 kits were remaining at the store, with 600 already having been sold. The advert called on interested buyers to rush and grab a kit at 3,000 Kenyan shillings. The advert is so alarming that they, are, they indicate they have already sold 400, and they have um, been, uh, uh, only 400 remaining, which means 600 have already been sold. But the KMPDC officials were alarmed by this advertisement, turning it false and illegal. They wanted to know how the clinic got the license to import and sell such kits, if indeed they were genuine as well as the full list of customers who had already purchased the kits. For us, we are more concerned about the safety of Kenyans. And once we get these kits and we, we get them certified by the regulatory agencies that are given that mandate, mm -hmm. then we shall be okay. So far, only Kenya Influenza Center laboratories have the capacity to test for the coronavirus in the country with the Kenyatta National Hospital and Bagadi Hospitals prepared to host corona-suspected and confirmed cases. Meanwhile, the Competition Authority of Kenya on Monday ordered Clean Shelf Supermarket to refund in full money to customers overcharged after buying hand sanitizers from one of their stores. According to the authorities, some of the sanitizers that normally retail at 800 shillings were being sold for 1,000 shillings and above. Clean Shelf on its part said that it was a pricing error that was caused by one of their managers in one particular supermarket in Ruaka, adding that the manager has since been punished. 
This after President Uhuru Kenyatta warned business persons against increasing prices for their products due to the coronavirus pandemic. Dennis Matara, K24. Um, just some of the information that's going out and uh, by large, I mean, misinformation as well uh, right there. Um, because as you can see, this coming from uh, a medical doctor, somebody who you'd trust, and when they tell you they have a self-testing kit, you go and buy, Mark. And, and that's where we are in this particular space because when you're usually told if you want to find out whether information is true or not, look at the source. Yes. This must be the most credible source you would have. Yes, How do you go further to distill this information? And, and, and that's the problem when professionals really cross the line. Uh, because let's be very clear, I don't think in the entire world there's a self-test kit. Otherwise, Trump would not be in the trouble he's, he's in right now because we know the United States doesn't have capacity. We know that mm -hmm. Tom Hanks knew that he had coronavirus because he had it tested in Australia. Now, that, that reality should dawn on Kenyans. And the, 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 the truth is, it is not, the, the race is not to test, right? The race is to follow the instructions that you've been given. Please don't interact with people, wash your hands. That's where the test is. Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is this. If you self-test and it comes out positive, guess what? Your steps are still the same uh, mm -hmm. that you had to do even before right. you knew. You, you, you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. So basically, there is no rush to self-test. There is no rush to find your own information because you don't trust what the government is saying. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it is impossible for all 150 governments across the world to lie at the same time. It is too big an effort. So if the United States is telling you the same thing the Kenya government is telling you, guess what? There's 99.9% .9 probability that they're telling you the truth. Right. So I think people need to stop trying to read the apocalypse into this thing because now religious nuts are the next ones uh, to begin to say that, you know what, now if you repent and buy special soap or water from me, you will get healed. No, you will not. Mm -hmm. Let's just be very clear, right? So the, 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 the point is stop looking at extra information base your decisions on the facts that are common and available. Right. What I mean by common and available is what the, the good doctor here is also saying. You know, what is it? The infectious rate? What do you do? Sanitize your hands, wash your hands, clean your hands as often as possible. Don't go touching every surface. You know, don't touch your face after you've touched these surfaces. Basic things, because guess what? Even after you get all that information and you say it is a special weapon that was created for the Chinese, uh, at the end of the day, how do you keep yourself away from that special weapon? It is the same thing. So when you realize that when you whittle down the information, it comes back to the same thing, then you will not fall for many uh, scams. Right. Yeah, that's uh, the, the, the key thing that I would say. And with let's, the information, uh, oh, you want to add on that as well? Yeah, let's think about testing, yes. right? First of all, it is conceivable that there are some rapid test kits out there mm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. okay, it's conceivable, okay? But coronaviruses are many. Yes. <laughs> this one right. that is affecting us now... Uh, this COVID, the one causing COVID-19 is just one coronavirus. Mm -hmm. If you take a test kit and then it shows you one line good, two lines bad. Mm -hmm. So suppose you have two lines. Mm -hmm. Which coronavirus do you, that? Have? do you have? Mm -hmm. uh, it is conceivable that you have any of those coronaviruses, including the ones that cause a common cold. Okay? So how will you know what to do for yourself? You won't know. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, the current testing in the country today is fairly sophisticated. Okay. And we are lucky, we are a bit ahead of the United States, let's say. The United States tried to make their own test kits and then they flopped and then they were in big trouble. Now as guys learned lessons from that kind of thing, we put our act together. So it's fairly sophisticated, but it is likely to benefit you when you've been admitted to the hospital mm. and the doctor wants to know whether you have coronavirus or not. Yes. Right. If you are a person who is walking okay and you are at home and you are doing fine, you want to test yourself so that you do what with the result? Right. Yeah. So that you <laughs> right. know what. Right. <laughs> it's not better just to know that you are fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And in any case, the coronavirus test is not directly related to your treatment because your treatment is generally, for coronavirus infection, is generally supportive. Some water here, some uh, paracetamol here, you know, right. like if you have a cough, some expectorant or something. Yes. There's no specific medicine for coronavirus. So what are you doing when you are testing yourself? Yeah. 
doesn't even make sense. And those people are fooling others out there. that They are selling a test. That's a very, I doubt if he's a doctor mm. who's doing that. Yeah. And, and a key part of uh, the communication that we've had uh, right across the world is the importance of just basic hygiene, washing our hands yes. and not touching our faces, not touching surfaces. Mm. And that's why we've seen, like with that particular uh, supermarket, um, hand sanitizers, um, I mean, they've just gone uh, through the roof in terms of yeah. pricing mm. right there, in terms of demand for it as well. And some people are asking, if I don't have a hand sanitizer, does mm. basic soap and water do it? Yes, it If does. I just got my bar of soap, yeah. regular bar of yeah. soap and water and yeah. wash my hands, yeah. does it do the same job? Because it seems like everybody wants 10 hand sanitizers to keep in the house. Yeah. This is the problem with the being middle class. That is like a level two or level three in the whole economic setup. Mm -hmm. this, this thing of trying to get everything, to have everything for yourself without thinking through it. Soap works perfectly fine. Hydrogen peroxide works perfectly fine. Jik works perfectly fine. Dettol works perfectly fine. You know, all these things that you use, mm -hmm. they, because we can demonstrate and there are even publications, there is peer-reviewed publications on the effects of some of these detergents on, right. on the coronavirus. So right. don't panic just because you didn't have, uh, you went to the supermarket and found people had taken away all the sanitizer. Go home, do your soap, do your jig, just keep mm. yourself clean. Don't touch things randomly. Right. Yeah. Okay, we'll be uh, taking a short break in just a bit and now getting in, uh, more into the, this communication just, aspect just, as just well. Just a quick one. I think I need to clarify. When he says do your jiki, it doesn't mean go and apply bleach on your no, skin. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, there's that uh, fake news that was going that if you drink bleach, you'll be cured of corona. So <laughs> <laughs> that's not what he means. Sanitize the surfaces. Uh, yeah, sanitize the surfaces. Uh, indeed. Before we get into the break, uh, because just wanted to look at uh, the, the communication strategy being put in place as well uh, by the emergency response uh, task force and the uh, you know, spokesman as well. Uh, Mark, from where you stand, um, a report or what they're doing so far? No, uh, excellent job, excellent job. I know people are saying that, oh, let's, let's have um, a medical doctor be the one who's talking all the time instead of Mtai um, Kagwe. Mm. I, I, I disagree, and I disagree for a number of reasons. Number one, Kenyans listen to politicians more than they listen to God. Okay, so when, 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 when that space, because that's where we get our leadership from, is talking, that's good. I like how it's being cascaded and governors are taking up their role and uh, Kanoguna is taking up his role and, and that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. And the medical practitioners, and we have uh, uh, the deputy director here of, of, of our research institution in Kenya talking about it, that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Right. And I like how he's not said anything that contravenes what the government has been saying. Right. The other thing is consistency, and the government has been consistent. The message is the same day in, day out. If you want to know how not to handle a crisis, please uh, watch the, uh, the peach-colored one in uh, the White House, uh, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how not to handle a crisis. And if you compare how Kenya is handling it and how it's, it's being handled there, it's, it's Kenya is doing a much, much better job. It's doing even a better job of containing the, the contagion than, it, than happened in the United States. And please, uh, number plates should not bother us. We're going to take a short break on that particular issue in terms of number plates being upside down or not. Come back after the break and talk more about our communication moving forward and all that you've been seeing online. How do you tell which is fake, which is not? Discuss that and more after the break.